All right, all right, all right. So I am going to show you this sort of technique I used on this shot that I figured by now would, I would be able to show you, but it, it's still not out, so I can't. So I just kind of recreated this situation in a, you know, crazy little manner. Sorry, just did it with wires. But essentially what I had to do is I was given a model of a pirate ship and the ship has, you know, ropes everywhere connecting all of the sails. But the problem was they weren't, it was just a model. So they were just essentially like this. So I had to come up with a way to just make them dynamic because I wanted to use them in vellum just to add more realism to the ship because it was on rough seas. So I'll just show you how I did that. So I already just got this started so you don't have to see me clicking around. So let's just add an assemble node type. I'm going to call it rope. And that's pretty much all we need to do. And then I'm going to do a for loop and make sure I do named primitive because nine times out of 10, I choose the wrong one. So I just like to go down to a single pass to make sure everything's working and Perfect. Okay, so now what we have to do, I'm actually going to show it in two different ways. The way I did it and then the ideal way. And the way I did it is sort of because that's what I was given. So because we have to take, we're going to take measurements of each little uh, polygon. But the way I did it, they were super long. There, it wasn't as detailed as this, so it wouldn't have worked the, the ideal way. So we're just going to take a bound. All right, orient the box. So there we go. And then we're going to kind of exploit its measurements to get this. So I'm just going to add in a measure so Override the name because we want the area. So if we go over here, you'll see the, whoop, sorry, area. Unclick that. Now we have the area of each polygon. So now we want to add a facet to break it. And then we'll just do cusp polygons and then it's not an exploded view just to show, see we're all separate. So now we'll go to sort and we're going to want to do it by the attribute of the primitive by its area. And let's go down and you'll see these switch from one to zero. Okay, because essentially what we want to do is we want the smallest area. And that's why I was saying that the situation I was in, it didn't work. It wouldn't, the sort wouldn't go in order. So you'll see how this one turns out where it's close, but not perfect. It worked for me because the camera, it was far enough and all of that. So. Okay, now that we have the sort, we don't need anything but these two smaller sides. Okay, so we're just gonna the blast. And the reason we want it smaller is that we just wanna do group one and zero, and then delete non-selected. Okay, so there we go. Now we're gonna create a group. You can do this a million ways, but just did it this way. Did it on the points. I'm going to call it corners. OK, so now it's just adding every single point on there. And then we'll add a primitive wrangle right here. And then I'm going to use what my friend David calls the, the lazy code. And all it is at point, and put 0 at point, primitives, boom. Can't see it there, and then we could just delete anything in the group or corner. Sorry, or delete selected points. So now we only have two points. We're going to create a line using the add sort. You can do it in a wrangle. Sorry, by group, just click that. Now we have a line. So now we'll just go down here and show you. So now what we're doing is we're essentially recreating it. Now, again, I said it was dynamic, so I used it for vellum, and that's what this is going to be used for. So we could actually just go up here, and you'll see where they don't line up perfectly. 
Okay. So again, this is not the ideal. I'll show that in a second. So we're going to add, convert it to, not convert to that, convert line. There we go. Let's move down the chain here. We sample it so we get more stuff, more points. I think, let's try, I think point two five should be fine. And then what we want to do in this case is, I'm just going to write this little thing because I'm going to, in vellum, I want to pin the first and last point. Now, obviously, we're not going to know how many points we have each time for each and every single one. So we'll just exploit that by writing this little wrangle. So we're just going to type in this little snippet here and little condition. So point number is equal to zero because zero is the only constant. Or the point number is equal to the total number of points minus one. And we'll put it into a group called pin equals one. Hit the wrong parentheses there. So you see the first and last. Now, if you're wondering why minus one, it's because it's zero based. So if we didn't, if we just did the total number of groups, it's going to be 47 and there is no point 47. We're done. And I'm just going to go ahead, add vellum hair, and I'm just going to use the default just to show it. So in here, we'll do pinpoints, because that's our group. Vellum solver. Do this guy. this guy, and let's press play. And there you go. So now you have your vellum ropes done over shabby modeling. OK, so we'll just go and compare the two in relation. So you can see that it's more of a approximation. Now, in my situation, I had to go this way because I didn't have end caps, OK? But because we have these end caps, we could, again, exploit their area. So we'll be able to actually get the perfect center of the circle. So I'll show you how to do that. So now for the exact one, the few are lucky and have the ideal condition. So delete the bound. We're going to keep our measure. And we're going to keep our facet. We're going to delete the sort. And then we're going to do an attribute promote. OK, we want the original. Well, we want it to be primitives. All right, area. And then we can leave there, maximum. And what that is going to do, let's go over here, is so on the rope, I'll just click area. Let's bring it up. We're going to have these two points. Well, the problem is it's 0 and 1101. So what we're going to do is sort it by the area, which luckily those end caps are the biggest ones. So no change. We're going to go to by attribute. Attribute is I'm going to reverse the point order. So it's there. And now everything else should be the same. So we'll come down here. You can see that kind of snaps over in place. Turn this guy on, we'll resum it, and then I'll compare it to the outside one. So there's that. Let's go out. And now you can see we're getting these little stuck pieces, and it's it's just because I don't have my resample up really high, but it doesn't matter. So there you go. So if you're ever in this situation where you have tons of geo and you need to just sort of redo it, here you go. I hope that helped. Thank you guys for watching.